This is the LightMe Neo HDMI 2 sync box. If you're not familiar with this, this is essentially RGB light strips for the back of your TV to sync with whatever you're watching and give you a very immersive light show. I've been waiting for this for quite a while. The previous version of this box didn't have any support for 4K 60Hz, HDR, HDR10+, or Dolby Vision. With the 2.0, this now does. So I'm very excited to try this out. I'm going to set this up with my brand new Samsung QLED TV. It's a 55 inch. You can get this for various different size TVs. You'll see on the left hand side of the box. You can get it for less than 65 inch ones between 66 to 90 and 91 to 120. There's plenty of things that come in the box that allow you to set it up with your TV. I'm going to unbox that for you now, showcase to you guys how it looks, give you a demo of connecting it to the HDMI sync box, my personal review of how it performs and let's just get straight into it. Okay, so just opening it up, you've got yourself the user manual, you've got the curved brackets, the straight brackets, this is the HDMI sync box itself, which actually you can see is very compact, very easily fits into the palm of my hand. You'll see there's a few LED indicators once it does get powered on for your Wi-Fi, the color LEDs and the power source itself. Along the back, you have a few inputs, so you've got the reset button just there on the left, this is the HDMI output for connecting this to your TV. You only have one HDMI input, which for most people might be a shame, but if you are going to maybe use this maybe for your PlayStation 5 or your gaming consoles, or you just want to connect like an Amazon Fire Stick or an Apple TV, then for most people that will do. There has been some users that have tried HDMI splitters. I don't have a compatibility list if those will actually work with this, but this is something just to be aware of. It does have one HDMI input for connecting it to your TV sources. Then you also have the LED strip for the side and the bottom, and I'll showcase the LED strip in a second. Then the DC input for the power adapter. You've got two LED strips here, which are cuttable with scissors as well if you need, but they should do a good enough job and they have USB at the end to connect to the box. Then you have the HDMI cable and a power adapter. Now I'll go over to my TV in a second, but essentially, the reason why I would recommend buying this one than some of the alternatives are two reasons. Now I have the Philips Hue HDMI sync box, which for one is super expensive and you also need to buy a bridge separately to connect your light strips, your lamps, your lighting, whatever it may be. And the cost of that is so expensive compared to this. This is probably just a fifth of the price of buying the Philips setup. The second one is if you buy other alternatives, which I've also tried, like the GoV lights, they sometimes utilize a camera that you have to attach to the top of your TV that sticks out to try and view whatever is on the screen and mimic that back to the lights behind the TV, which again, is probably not the cleanest setup. This one, you don't require any of that. No bridge, no camera, nothing, just the HDMI sync box, connect it, and it's pretty much plug and play. This is also complemented with an app as well, which I'll showcase some examples with. But let's go ahead and connect it to the back of my TV and I'll run through how I set it up, what sort of options you have within the app as well, and then give you a demo of a video that showcases a lot of colors to showcase you know, the beauty of this. And then I'll also showcase setting it up with my PlayStation 5 as well because it does have 4K 60 Hz compatibility. So I will set it up with a game that supports that. And I also use my PS5 with HDR Plus. So let's go ahead and set this up and see how it performs. Okay, now I've made space to start connecting the light strips at the back of my 55 inch TV here. I'm probably going to use the ones for the corners, make it a little bit easier to stretch around the sides and then hook up these two light strips to the two USB ports on the HDMI sync box. Right, here we go. The light strips are now connected. So I've got the two brackets that are rounded for the corners on the top left and the top right. Then I've used pretty much all of the straight brackets. So I've got two there along the top I've got one along the side and for the bottom strip I've got two at the bottom here as well and just a caveat you need to have both of the light strips connected even if you don't want to connect the bottom one you have to have it connected so that it connects to the HDMI sync box which would allow it to power on and pair to the LightMe app so just remember that if you're not maybe mounting your TV onto a wall that it's important to have both of them connected 
as you can see, I've got all of the connections there. Everything is lit up, it's powered on, the color is blinking, and they also have the flashing Wi-Fi light, so it's ready to connect to the app. Now I'm going to connect this to my PS5 first, which I've done with one of the HDMI ports, give you a sample demo of playing a game. But before I do that, let's go ahead and connect to the LightMe app. Once your HDMI sync box has gone into pairing mode, like I've just shown by connecting the two light strips for the first time, I've opened up the app, I've registered my account, I've set the Wi-Fi options in there, and it's automatically discovered that there's a connected device nearby. So all I need to do is select this, and it will start automatically connecting and registering the device. It will take a couple of minutes, and then we should be ready to go. It took less than a minute. You can see it's now connected. All I have to do is toggle the living room option on there for my light. It's now on and I'm going to be showcasing this with a game on my PlayStation 5 first because I have HDR on and it's playing a game at 4K 60Hz refresh rate. So let's go ahead and give you guys a demo on seeing how that performs. Okay guys, so you saw that was pretty immersive with that gameplay and for me, you know, that's probably the most important thing when I am playing my PlayStation with having light strips like this is to feel more immersive into the gaming. Now on the app as well, I just want to showcase a couple of more things that you can use this for. On the main screen, you can see it's set up to match the screen, which is the default option. You can choose between weak, normal and high as well to see how intense you want the lighting to change with what's on the screen. I've left it at normal, but if it's a little bit too fast for you, then you can set it to weak so it's more fluid and more smooth. Along the bottom, you have a few options. Taste is where you can see some of the scenes and modes. You can set something like fire, for example, and you can see how it changes to that ambience of that mode. There's plenty of different options if you wanna just automatically let it run in that mode whilst whatever you're watching on a screen is just playing back, then you can do that. Let me just cycle through a few more examples. So this is star. You also have flow, pure, swing. You also have fireworks as well, which I think is pretty cool. And then you've got rainbow, which basically cycles through all the different colors of the rainbow. If you go back to the main screen, you can also select music. What that does is that takes the audio coming from the TV or maybe any other speakers in the room and it will automatically flash the lights to the audio that is hearing. If I select this, you can see right now, it's flashing its lights based on my voice. So when I'm completely silent, nothing happens. But when I start speaking, you can see it basically will flash different parts of the light strip. There's also a brightness slider right there at the bottom. If I go back to screen, I can dim this down or I can make it 100% bright. So plenty of variety of ways of how to control the light strip itself. And finally, you can also set this up with voice assistant. So whether you have Google Assistant or Amazon Echo, I have Amazon Echo dot right here. So I'm gonna use that to turn the light on and off. And it's very quick and easy. It took a couple of minutes to go through the process to set it up on the app. But once you've done that, it'll be so convenient to use that rather than using the app to turn this on and off for your HDMI devices. Alexa, turn off the Neo light. Alexa, turn on the Neo light. And how quick and easy was that? You can see it was very responsive and that's one thing I really like about it. So the final thing is I'm going to showcase another demo highlighting some of the colors on the screen through a YouTube video. And I've now connected my Apple TV to the HDMI sync box. One thing that this also is very good at when there's a lot of dark areas, whether that's at the top 
the bottom, the left, the right, or even near the middle, it will still capture the lights and immerse them accordingly to each of those sides. So I'm showcasing a demo video now that utilizes a lot of black areas and you can still see all of the colors spreading around the entire screen. So let's take a look. Right, so hopefully you found that showcase very useful and it did give you a good idea of the capabilities of this HDMI sync box. I'm super impressed with this and coming in at just under $140, I think this is an absolute bargain for what it can do. And for me personally, I always install these types of light strips for the back of my TVs. It really enhances my viewing experience. Most likely I will keep this connected to my PS5. You know, it does have that one HDMI input only and I will use this for my gaming because it does take my gaming to the next level. If there's anything else you guys want to know about the LightMe Neo 2.0, then drop a comment down below. If you did like this review, make sure to give it a huge thumbs up. I do tech reviews every week and I've got plenty of cool gadgets just like this coming out, which I know you're going to like. So make sure you hit that subscribe button and I will catch you guys next time. Take care.